Prime Minister inaugurates Maitri Setu connecting India and Bangladesh, says it will benefit Assam, Mizoram, Manipur besides Tripura. Opposition continues with its protest over fuel price hike. Both Houses of Parliament adjourn for the day. First phase of nominations for Assam Assembly elections concludes. Chief Minister Harbananda Khonwal files papers from Majuli. Twenty militants bid farewell to arms in Manipur. Chief Minister N. Biren Singh says government will never disappoint him. And Meghalaya to fill up post lying vacant in Home Department within months, says Home Minister in State Assembly. A very good evening, viewers. Welcome to the Northeast News Bulletin from the studios of DDK Guwahati. This is Sukanya Bharatwaj, and now the stories in details. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today said the Moitri Setu on Feni River connecting India and Bangladesh will help improve connectivity and enhance economic opportunities for people of both the countries. Virtually inaugurating the Maitri Setu connecting subroom in South Tripura in, to Ramgarh in Bangladesh, Modi said the entire region is being developed as a trade corridor between India and Bangladesh. He said that along with Tripura, it will also benefit Assam, Mizoram and Manipur, which will get connected with Bangladesh and other countries of Southeast Asia. He also laid the foundation stone of National Highway 208 connecting the Unakote District Headquarters at Kailashahar with the Khoai District Headquarters. It will provide an alternative route to NH44. The 80-kilometer NH208 project has been taken up by the National Highways and Infrastructure Development Corporation Limited with a project cost of 1,078 crore rupees. <laughs> Balki Apto, water wage, port infrastructure bhi is me jud gaya hai. Is pure region ko purvi uttar purvi bharat or Bangladesh ke beach ek prakar se trade corridor ke rup me viksit kia ja raha hai. Sabrum or Ramgad ke beach setu se hamari maitri bhi majbut hui hai. और भारत बांग्लादेश की समृद्धि का कनेक्शन भी जुड़ गया बीते कुछ वर्षों में भारत बांग्लादेश के बीच लैंड रेल और वाटर कनेक्टिविटी के लिए जो समझौते जमीन पर उतरे हैं इस सेतु से वो और मजबूत हुए हैं इससे त्रिपुरा के साथ both the Houses of Parliament adjourned for the day today following opposition protest over the hike in fuel prices. Earlier, when the House met, opposition members created an uproar over the issue, demanding a rollback of increased prices of petrol, diesel and LPG. Speaking Om Birla, Speaker Om Birla repeatedly urged agitating members to go back to their seats and allow the House to take up question hour. Amid noisy scenes, he tried to run the question hour but in vain. As the pandemonium continued, he adjourned the House till 12 noon. In Rajya Sabha also, when the House met after the first adjournment at 12 noon, the opposition parties again raised the issue. Congress members trooped into the well and started raising slogans against the hike. Deputy Chairman Harivansh tried to run the House by initiating the question hour and asked the members to go back to their seats. Amid noisy scenes, the upper house was adjourned till 12, 2 p.m. In Assam, today was the last day of filing nomination papers for the first phase assembly polls. Polling will be held in 47 seats in this phase on the 27th of this month. Chief Minister and BJP nominee Harbananda Khonwal submitted his nomination at Majuli. Accompanied by a number of senior leaders, Khonwal took out a rally before filing his papers. Khonwal claimed that the BJP-led alliance will come to power again on the basis of the development works done during the last five years. Senior Congress leader and former minister Rocky Bul Hussain also filed nomination papers for Samaguri in Nogao district. Sitting Congress MLA Nurul Huda and Aham Ganapurikhat legislator Renupama Rajkwa to submitted nominations today. Scrutiny will be conducted tomorrow. The last date of withdrawal of candidature is on 12th March. Counting will take place on the 2nd of May. Sir. 
In news from Meghalaya Assembly, Chief Minister Conrad K. Sangma on Monday told the House that the cause of death of six minors who had died in Sorkari near Dien Shah Lahu village in East Jentia Hills was identified as trauma leading to multiple fractures and hemorrhage. Replying to a question raised by Congress member from East Shillong, Amprin Lindo, during the questionnaire, Sangma further informed that the several errors have been made in the case and cases have been registered under several sections of Indian Penal Code and other relevant acts. Now we take a short break. We'll be back with more news. Stay tuned. Got it. सोचिए अगर असल जिंदगी में ऐसी हालत हो तो कितनी मुश्किलें होती हैं लेकिन शुक्र है बैंकिंग के लिए नहीं अगर आपकी उम्र सत्तर साल से अधिक हो या आप दिव्यांग हो तो बैंक आपको कुछ जरूरी बैंकिंग सुविधाएं घर बैठे बैठे दे सकता है आरबीआई कहता है जानकार बनिए सतर्क रहिए वेलकम बैक in Manipur, altogether 20 cadres from different underground outfits today laid down their arms before Chief Minister N. Biren Singh in a homecoming ceremony at the Banquet Hall of 1st Battalion Manipur Rifles in fall. The cadres who have joined the mainstream included 16 from Thado People's Liberation Army, TPLA, two from UNLF, one each from PLA and Pripak Pro. Speaking on the occasion, Chief Minister said the central government's development policy for northeastern states have witnessed a sea change ever since Narendra Modi became the Prime Minister of India. He said the central government under his leadership has been constantly working towards bringing development of northeast states at par with other states of the country. He assured the surrendered cadres that the government will never disappoint them. In Nagaland, Governor R. N. Ravi today reviewed the projects under National Highways and Infrastructure Development Corporation Road in Fake. Kifira and Juniboto districts. The meeting was held at Vamuzo Memorial Town Hall, Chazoba. All the deputy commissioners and superintendents of police of the three districts and the contractors for the projects attended the meeting. The governor directed all concerned to see to it that the projects are completed on time. The union government has said three pending installments of dearness allowance of central government employees and the pensioners will be restored prospectively due from July in this year. In a written reply in the Rajya Sabha today, Minister of State for Finance Anurag Thakur said that as and when the decision to release the future installments of DA due from 1st of July this year is taken, the rate of DA as effective from January last year to January 2021 will be restored prospectively. The rates will be subsumed in the cumulative revised rates. He said the government has saved more than 37,000 crore rupees from freezing the three installments, which helped in dealing with the impact of COVID-19 pandemic. In Meghalaya, Home Minister Lakmen Rimboy said in the State Assembly on Monday that the government will try to complete the process for filing up, filling up various posts lying vacant in the Home Department in the next few months. He was replying to a question by Congress member process. Tisak Mayrimboy informed that more than 2,000 posts are lying vacant in the Police Department from grade 4 and above. In sports news. In men's hockey, India beat Great Britain 3-2 in a closely contested match at the Antwerp in Belgium on Monday. Striker Mandeep Singh scored the all-important goal in the last minute of the game. It was India's fourth and final match of the Europe Tour. 
India has crossed a landmark in COVID-19 vaccination as more than 20 lakh COVID vaccine doses have been administered across the country in the last 24 hours. Union Health Ministry has said the cumulative number of COVID-19 vaccine doses administered in the country has crossed 2 crore 30 lakh today. The ministry said that more than 43,74,000 beneficiaries aged more than 60 years and over 7 lakh beneficiaries aged more than 45 years with specific comorbidities were vaccinated till date. The countrywide vaccination drive was rolled out on the 16th of January this year and vaccination of the frontline workers from the 2nd of last month. In the COVID update from the Northeast, Assam reported 277 active cases, 2,14,964 discharge cases, while the death toll is 1,094. There are three active cases in Arunachal Pradesh, followed by 16,780 release cases. The dead account for 56. With 29 active cases, Manipur has reported 28,894 cured cases, while tally for the dead is 373. Meghalaya has 12 active cases, followed by 13,813 release cases. The tally for the dead is 148. In Mizoram, number of active cases is 10, while cured cases stand at 4,412. The number of deaths is 10. Reporting 19 active cases, Nagaland has logged 12,107 discharge cases, while the death toll is 91. Sikkim has 50 active cases followed by 5,989 cured cases. The dead account for 135. Saddled with 30 active cases, Tripura has logged 33,003 release cases, while the tally for the dead remains at 391. For more viewers, can also watch our bulletins and other programs on our YouTube channel, DD News Guwahati. To end the news, the main points once again. Prime Minister inaugurates Maitri Setu connecting India and Bangladesh, says it will benefit Assam, Mizoram, Manipur, besides Tripura. Opposition continues with its protest over fuel price hike. Both houses of parliament adjourn for the day. First phase of nominations for Assam Assembly elections concludes. Chief Minister Harbananda Khonwal files paper from Majuli. Twenty militants bid farewell to arms in Manipur. Chief Minister N. Biran Singh says government will never disappoint them. And Meghalaya to fill up post lying vacant in Home Department within months, says Home Minister in State Assembly. Before taking leave, viewers are reminded to maintain physical distancing, regularly sanitize hands and frequently wash hands with soap. Remember to wear masks properly and join the Mask Up India campaign by Dodarshan to defeat the pandemic. Mask Up India. That brings us to the end of this evening's bulletin. Thank you for tuning in. Namaskar.